Hello everyone, it's Kathleen from The Quilted Story. I am going to try to do a simple tutorial, hands-on, on how to do a paper pieced pattern and basically give you an idea of how paper piecing works. Now, I'm going to sew off camera, as you can see my hands here. I'm gonna sew off camera, but I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here on the display, including the pressing. Now, we're gonna do a simple square and a square today. And when you buy or purchase my pattern on my Etsy shop, maddieandme2.etsy.com, you will not only receive three different sizes of the block, you will also receive the fabric recipe cards, which will tell you what size to cut your pieces of fabric. I've already prepped mine here, so we're ready to go. This is a simple square and a square. The center will be one color, and then I'm going to use the same fabric for all four corners. You can use different ones if you want. You can make it totally scrappy. It's totally up to you. You make that choice, but basically I'm trying to teach the basic ins and outs of paper piecing. Now, when you download your pattern and you print it out, you wanna make sure that your printer is set for actual size so that your block will be the size it needs to be. I'm doing the five inch block here today. As you can see, my watermark logo is on the bottom, so you'll know that that's my pattern. And I like to print mine out on my regular inkjet printer, but I use a paper that I get on Amazon and I'll link it down below. It's called newsprint paper. It's very thin and it's basically newsprint, clean newsprint paper. I like using it because it's easy to tear away and it's not as bulky. So that's one thing that I do. And then when you print your pattern out, it'll basically look like this and different sizes for each one. So the first thing we're gonna do when we get started is I like to use a glue stick and I use the clear one because sometimes when you're using lighter fabrics like I'm gonna use here today, if your glue stick is purple, it sometimes will stain that fabric. So just be aware of that, totally up to you. I like to use the clear and of course the washable one. So the first thing I like to do is I like to use my card that I have written the words because this is how we're going to do the, the technique. We're gonna prepare the fabric or the block, we're gonna sew the block, we're gonna press the block. And we're gonna continue to repeat that over and over and over as we place each section of the paper piece pattern. This is just a simple cardstock that I cut two pieces of and I glued them together to make it kind of rigid and thick. And I like using this because it helps me score my pattern. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, as you can see, here's my pattern. It's a square and a square. Here's the square and then the little triangles on the outside. It's also known as the economy block. The first piece we're gonna place is number one, and then we have two, three, four, and five. So this is a five piece block. The first thing I wanna do is I'm going to mark all of the outside edges of that square and score it basically with my pattern or with my um, with my heavy card stock. I set it on the line. I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around it because this one, I'm gonna place at number one. And so therefore I wanna be able to see all my, all my parameters all the way around the square. So I'm gonna mark them each line all the way around. You put the card stock down, you roll the paper over, you crease it with your finger. Put your cardstock down. Oops, let me get back in camera. You roll over the paper and you crease it with your finger. And you're gonna go all the way around that square on all four sides until, you, then that way, if you look at it, you can see you have these crease marks so you know where you're supposed to place things. I like to prep my paper piece patterns because it makes everything very, very simple. 
So the next thing you need to know is that you're always going to sew on the printed side, but you're going to place your fabric right sides up on the wrong side. So let's turn our block over. And now, as you can see, we can see our outside parameters of where this first piece of fabric needs to be set. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little dab of glue stick on there. And the reason why I use glue stick is because I don't want it, pins sometimes will distort it. And so this way it, it adheres it temporarily and holds it in place while I'm getting ready to sew. So as you can see, I'm using those lines, those score lines that I made, and then I'm pressing that fabric in place with my finger and then I turn it over and now I'm going to turn back again on those score lines that I made and make sure that I have about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I do. I have pretty much a good quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to trim this one up a little bit just because I want it to be a little bit more even. So I'm going to get rid of that. And now I have my first piece placed. And as you can see, it's stuck on there because I used the glue stick. And then this way I can avoid using pins. Now we look at our pattern and the first number that we're going to, we've already set number one, we're going to set number two. And so it's right here. We're going to turn it over. We're going to take our first piece and in the fabric recipe cards, it told me what size to cut this, how to cut it into a square first and then into a triangle to achieve a stack of little triangles that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna place this right sides together. And what I like to do is this point should match parallel to the point at the outside of the pattern. So then that way you know you have it where you need it to be. So I make it even with the edge. That way I know that that is all gonna get caught in my seam allowance when I sew it. So as you can see, I've placed it right sides together and then I'm gonna turn it over. As you can see, it's still, you know, I, I kind of hold it gingerly and then I'll put it into my machine. And when I start sewing, I sew beyond the beginning of the line and I sew all the way past the end of the line. So I'm gonna go all the way to the outside of the parameters of this block. I do not back tack. And the reason why I don't is because it adds bulk to the seam and you don't want any more bulk than you already have. So let's start, we'll, we will pierce our needle here and we will sew straight down and we will end beyond the parameter of the block. We will always shorten our stitch length when we sew because we're basically wanting to perforate the paper when we are sewing. So shorten your stitch length, put your needle in the center, and if you have an open toe, use the open toe foot because then that way you can watch your needle while it sews on the line because basically you are sewing on the line. If you can count, and you can sew on a line straight, halfway decently straight, it doesn't have to be perfect, you can paper piece. It's just a matter of steps. So I'm gonna take it over the machine quick and I'm gonna sew all the way down on that line and I'm gonna come right back. Okay, I'm back and I have sewn on that line. And the one thing I wanted to kind of let you guys know was I always clip my threads all the way to the paper and on the other side, all the way to the fabric. And the reason why I do that is because I don't wanna have a bunch of scraggler threads getting caught in my seam allowances as I stitch more and more pieces on. So as you can see, I've got it sewn on there. I sewed on the written side. My fabric is right sides together. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it forward. I'm gonna finger press it just to kind of give it a nice and you can use one of these rollers. I have one of those Lori Holt rollers. You can use that. But what I like to do, because I, when I tend to paper piece, I tend to have a lot of paper piecing blocks going on at one time. So I always have my little iron there. I shoot it with the iron real quick. And then I let my, my fabric press, 
my fabric clapper sit on top of it just for a second or two and that helps set the seam flat. I like all of my blocks to be flat. It is something that quilters will tell you. Your blocks need to be flat in order for you to achieve a flat quilt top. So once I have that, now I've got that in, in place and I'm gonna put it up to the window and see through the light that yes, this fabric exceeded. I want it to go beyond the parameters of the block because I'm going to trim the block down to give me a perfect five inch block when I'm done. So that's why these fabric recipe cards are so important because in that way you know for sure that the fabric you're cutting and you're using in each spot of your pattern, you know that it fits correctly. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the next one. That was number two. We're gonna do number three now. We're gonna take it and we're back here to, because we just pressed, we're back up here to prepare. So let's go ahead and we'll put that on the line and we can see we have a good quarter inch seam allowance. So we're not gonna worry about trimming it up. And we're gonna go ahead and grab another one of these triangles, as you can see. And I'm gonna place it right sides together. Now this time I have a couple ways to make sure I'm lining it up in the center. And one is to, of course, match it with that point that's up here. You can see it through the paper. That's what, another reason why I like this newsprint. Or you can make sure that it's parallel to this point because you know that you have set, it's parallel to this point because you know you have set it correctly. So as you can see, I have it right sides together. The edges are even because I've already prepped the fabric. And I'm gonna go over to the machine and I'm going to sew right on that line, starting beyond and going beyond. And I am not back tacking. I will come right back as soon as I sew that. Okay, I'm back from sewing on the line. And as you can see, I sewed on the number three line. I started beyond, I went beyond. I did not back tack. So now I have it set. I'm going to press it up. I'll go ahead and use my my roller because I know a lot of gals like to use the roller rather than the the iron but I am going to set mine with my little iron and I'm going to put my fabric clapper wooden clapper on top just to hold it for a sec and make sure it's nice and flat okay now we have piece one two and three on now we're going to do the same thing for four and five and let me go ahead and do four so I can show you a little trick. Let's get prepared, let's prepare, because we already pressed, now we're gonna prepare. Let's prepare number four. Put the pattern down, put your, line, your, your card on number four, and you're gonna bring it back, and you, as you can see, let me get, make sure I'm in camera real good, you can see that there's some excess of fabric that we need to kind of get rid of and clean up. So what we do is we tear it back. You're just basically removing it from the actual paper so I can expose that. And then I'll put my ruler on top and I'll give it a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'll cut off a quarter of an inch from that actual score line that you folded over, one quarter of an inch, I cut off those little excess pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna throw that away. And now see how now I have a nice clean edge because I have prepared it, as you can see on my card. And the reason why I do this on my cards is because when I used to teach this in the classroom setting, this helped my students remember what step they were on. So we just got done preparing. We now have a straight edge and we're gonna add the number four triangle piece. We're gonna do that right sides together. And I'm gonna make sure that this triangle point is parallel with this up here. You can see, you, I can see it pretty good and I think you can see some of it on camera because this paper is thin enough you can see through it. So I've got it lined up where I want it. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take it over to my machine and I'm gonna sew on that number four line starting beyond and going beyond, and I'm not going to back tack. So I'll go and do that. 
and I will come right back and show you where I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and do four and five at this stage, because it's basically the same as putting on number four will be the same as number five. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, well, now I'm back. And it's completed. I have put all five pieces and sewn all five pieces on. And as you can see, I am ready to trim it up and make it a perfect five inch block. I did the exact same procedure for each section. So now when I turn it over, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that by looking up in the window, you can see that my fabric extends the actual parameters of the block itself, including the seam allowance, because you wanna trim it on that second line. One quarter of an inch from the main line is a secondary line that's slightly lighter, and that's what you're gonna cut on. I usually tend to put my ruler on this dark outer line and measure one quarter of an inch and trim it all the way around. So let me do that for you so you can see how I do that. I just put my ruler down and I put it on the solid dark line and I'm gonna measure one quarter of an inch and I'm gonna go ahead and trim it and I'm gonna do that all the way around it. So that's the second side. And here's the third side. I like to use a little bit larger ruler because I have seen a lot of people when they paper piece, they tend to use a little skinny ruler. And I like to keep my fingers safe because safety first is always important. This way I have something more to grip and put my hand on and keep it away from the rotary blade. Okay, now I've trimmed all four sides. And now look, I have, excuse me, I have the perfect block and it's five inches square, five and a half unfinished and five inches finished because I have still the seam allowance all the way around it. So when I sew it to another block, I will have that quarter of an inch seam. Now, if you want to know, I to, in order to tear the paper off, I, I tend to tear all my paper off of all my blocks before I piece them together, just because sometimes when you're sewing two blocks together that have paper on them, you'll have a lot of slippage and then you don't have accuracy in your block placement when you're sewing the pieces together. So I tend to tear all my paper off and as you can see, my seam, the seam length or the stitch length I used was shortened. I use a 1.4 on my machine and it perforated this newsprint paper. So I'll go ahead and I remove all the paper all the way around first. Oops, let me get that little scraggler thread so I don't keep tearing it. And then I just go on ahead and I keep taking all the paper off. This is a great little job to do while you're watching TV. And then this one is the center one, comes right off. That glue stick was just enough to hold it in place so I could avoid using pins. So now, once I clear this off, you can see I have a perfect block. And look at how nice and flat that is. And it is, oops, let me get my ruler on here. It is supposed to be five and a half inches. It's five and a half inches that way. And it's five and a half inches this way. It's a perfect block. That's the great thing about foundation paper piecing. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below or give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more information and more tutorials to come. Thank you very much and happy quilting. Bye-bye.